but uh, I'll set this up a little bit. Um, I was a fairly routine guy born into a nice house. Uh, what I did is I was a fairly common sort of white boy suburban misdemeanor and I sort of imitated a thug until I became one. In the book you see documents or you see pictures or um, and then if you go to the website that there's videotape um, and audio tape and documents for you to sort of not just take me at my word but sort of look at something that should give it some sort of verisimilitude. It was uh, uh, really embarrassing um, because you're essentially saying to people, you know, I know I haven't seen you for 10, 20 years, da, 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 and you're sort of happy to have me out of your life, but here I am back again. I want to inspect that huge scab on your abdomen that I put there, and, 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 and will you tear it off, and can I videotape the results? I flew to Minneapolis to do it. I thought, how much worse would this really have been if I just stayed in my basement in New Jersey and typed it out? I mean, really. <laughs> and I, I, I just, I had this list of targets and people I was going to see, and I was having keen, keen regrets about this <laughs> sort of, you know, I got to the airport, waiting for my luggage, slipped outside to have a cigarette, and the first guy that opened this door, the door was tied, cleaned out this epic nice guy who gave me my last job before I tipped over, who extended his hand to me, and I, I broke every bone in it. Didn't mean to, didn't want to, but at the time I was just incapable of sort of doing anything else. And so I just said, it's on. And I said, look, Todd, I'm, I'm doing this book, and I, I don't want to really just write about what I know. I want to talk to you about what actually happened. He said, well, it was Tuesday at 2 o'clock, and I'm like, OK, here we go. There were people that wouldn't talk to me. Um, my first wife, my ex-wife, was like, a really good idea. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. The journalism aspect of the book is, is it, seems, it seems so well reported in such a solid piece of, of journalism, and, and it seems like you never had a problem filing a, a, a good, solid story. Um, or in your functional days, you didn't have a, a problem filing true, a good, solid true, story. True. But um, it, seems like, it seems like with a lot of journalists, because a lot of journalists have, have drug and alcohol problems, um, the, first thing, the first thing that goes sometimes is a commitment to, you know, to is the commitment to the truth or, or cutting corners um, to get a story. They, they I didn't do. notice that. Really? Think of all the functional alcoholics and addicts in America's newsrooms down through the ages <laughs> and, and how much. Uh, um, I just think the job's always the last to go. They're sort of like cops, it's the job, and then there's. You know, meanwhile, they're, you know, they've been kicked out of their house. They don't got two nickels there, but God help that they miss the deadline. Let's say that you as a person are sort of disappearing and atomizing because of your behavior and sort of, um, it's kind of overwhelming sort of moral bankruptcy that overtakes you and what you once were is beginning to disappear. One way to prove you exist is to have a story with your name on it. And so one of the things, the, the, the book is built on a series of sort of reveals about I thought things were one way and they turned out to be another. And if you had asked me before I reported the book, I would say I watched out of journalism for <coughs> three, four years. I never stopped typing. I saw my treatment bed filing to the Pioneer Press and I think that there was a part of me that thought, um, you know what, if I don't do this, I, I, just, I just will evaporate.